What's up guys, Invader1 here again, and I am back. Yes, I'm here with another Platinum Solo, guys. And this one is pretty cool, really awesome, and we have a lot to talk about. Um, I'm also going to talk a little bit about some of the future plans. Um, I got some new gameplay coming out in other games as well I want to talk about here. But uh, I do want to talk about Mass Effect 3 and this Platinum Solo, and a little bit about the Crow Guard. And I'm going to explain a few things about this character. There's a reason why I have... I, 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 I never really showed any platinum gameplay with him for a very, very long time. I, I you know, I just, um, I kind of stood away from this character. Uh, well, meaning in the sense of showing gameplay because uh, there's this whole stigma depending on where you're coming from uh, when it comes to this character I think number one this character is absolutely awesome he is such a great great character he is really freaking awesome he's a Krogan I mean who does not love the Krogans the Krogans are absolutely amazing and when this guy came out he was like it was it just blew everybody away because he was the, the most strongest Krogan at the time the Krogan Vanguard you know he could charge he could keep his barriers up his shields up I mean this guy is so amazing his mobility you know his mobility kinda sucks you know he's, he doesn't dodge but that does it doesn't matter <laughs> it really doesn't matter for what he can do so I'm gonna explain a few things that you probably have not heard before about this character. Okay, some things that maybe a lot of people know, but they, uh, you, you can only find either in the forums or information that that you probably wouldn't be able to um, to be able to tell. And, and, and let me explain that. Uh, the, this character was made very, very famous by a few other uh, popular, very popular gamers. One specifically, which was Excal, Excalazors, and uh, I'm definitely a fan of you guys. I we, we communicate, by the way, guys. Um, uh, Excal and I, I, I had actually uh, when YouTube had the YouTube video linkage, my my Thunderdome Krogan Sentinel Platinum Solos w was linked to his very famous uh, Krogan Vanguard uh, King. Uh, King, King of Tuchanka Platinum Solo. There you go. I think that's that's how it's called. So we uh, we know each other. We've communicated, by the way, and um, you know some of our work was linked before uh, when YouTube still had video linkage. V YouTube took that off. So if you don't see any links at the bottom, like to other videos, that that's not something that that was done intentional by anybody. It's just um, YouTube. Just they felt that uh, well, Google slash YouTube felt that there was no. There was no reason to continue having video linkage. So, at the moment that YouTube did that, well, uh, XCal's video and my video were no longer linked. But if you watch XCal's video, I think it's really awesome. He did a, a an amazing platinum solo with this character on not this map per se. This is the hazard map. I chose the, this hazard map just to give him give the crow guard a little bit more of a challenge. Um, he did he did it versus the Geth as well. And a few, and a few of the times he, the guy is really great, but he, he also, um, he did it on fire-based ghosts, but not the hazard version. And when he did it, the the geth were different. The geth were different. This is why I want to talk about this a little bit. Um, not comparing, uh, not comparing his solo to mine at all. Uh, I think Excal is amazing. He did a great job, and uh, kudos to him. So uh, what I want to do is kind of talk about how this game is presently and some of the differences between a solo like that and uh, even some of the other Krogard solos that you may have seen at that time, at that point in time, versus the experience that you'll have now. Now, and the reason I want to talk about that is because there, you know, sometimes some people will, will look at a certain solo or whatever, and they'll be like, "Man, my Rieger can't do that kind of damage. I've tested it, but, you know." So I want to talk about a few of those little things so you guys can understand. So if you're on a console, you're on PC or whatever you could understand the differences and uh, how some of the gameplay may seem a little different and so you don't feel like oh man I'm not getting the output that I'm supposed to get or whatever so you understand uh, some of the gameplay mechanics so I'm gonna go really into this because this is this is the character to go into this with and this is I, I, I specifically picked this kit this setup this is a very popular setup very well known and at the same time I really enjoyed don't get me wrong I, I think the Krogan Vanguard is absolutely awesome Awesome. He is amazing. He's just a lot of fun. Um, and the great thing about him is he survives. He's tanky. He can get insta killed. Don't get me wrong. I mean, playing against the Reapers, having Banshees, teleporting all the time, it, it just really gets him in trouble. Um, I, I had a, I, I, w I had a previous attempt that I was going to do this against the Reapers, 
And it turns out that um, it's very, it's, you know, having double banshees on every every wave was a bit of a trouble because um, I would I would lock onto an enemy and biotic charge, and I had a situation where a banshee just appeared in the middle of my biotic charge. Now, mind you, when you're in your biotic charge, you're supposed to be invincible, like you just go. But she appeared, like she just I don't she teleported from one side of the, like I don't know what part of the map in front of me. And in the middle of my biotic charge, where I'm supposed to be invincible, just go through it. My character, like in the middle of the air, went backwards, like as if it was like some kind of magnet, and somehow got in. She picked me up in the middle of the air and insta killed me. So that was, first of all, that was insane. That's not supposed to happen. That's the unfortunate part about this game that. There are quite a few bugs. There's still a lot of bugs, game-breaking bugs sometimes that will really hurt the game uh, in, in many aspects. And that's, you know, that that's unfortunate. Uh, they did a great job with the game, regardless. They they you know, Bioware, uh, you know, they they hit the ball out of the park with this game. But at the same time, there's still bugs, and I'm I'm looking forward to seeing what the next Mass Effect is uh, multiplayer is going to be like because they've learned a lot from this one. So I'm pretty sure that. You know they take that they're taking that knowledge presently because they are presently working on the next Mass Effect, and um, you know they're they're making sure that whatever bugs or whatever things that they learn from here they're gonna apply for the next one. But yeah, that, you know stuff like that playing against uh, the Reapers is actually a little tougher for the Crow Guard versus uh, playing versus the Geth, even though the Geth are ridiculous. So let's talk about the differences before I go into the actual build and the gameplay because a lot I hear this a lot and I see comments. Um, I see some of the comments on XCal's video, that's people asking questions about it as well. And I see some comments on other videos as well when it comes to the Crow Guard and the Rieger and stuff like that. So I'm gonna I'm gonna break it down, okay? And and the, the things that I'm gonna tell you have already been tested. So th this is not something me making something up or you know <laughs> trying to assume something these are things that you can find on the bioware social network tests that have been done you know within the code uh, of, of how these things work so the Rieger let's talk about the Rieger first before we go into the build before we go into the Krogan Vanguard before we talk about how awesome he is and how to set up his build and how to be, be a super tank and not just not die okay well the Rieger the Rieger as a weapon the Rieger a weapon as is a close quarters combat gun okay it has a very limited range so you know some people say oh the Rieger's so overpowered is this and that up close it can be but that's why they set it up this way the range is so limited um, that it really in my opinion it is not an OP weapon it really is not I, I I rarely ever see it used in public games I rarely ever see it used in in um well, actually, in many games, even regular games with my friends, even on speed, we just don't take it because it's just the, the, the range limit. The old weapon is only good if you're up close and personal, and depending on the character, that is very detrimental, especially, you know, the, depending on the character. A, a platinum, depending on, the, uh, depending on the character, could be up close and personal. Some characters, you want to be far because you have very limited health and shields, and you want to survive, so you want a gun that gives you some range. So... The Rieger, to me, in my personal opinion, it is not an overpowered weapon, uh, even though up close it can be. When you the character and enemies up close, absolutely, you can destroy, wreck everything. This gun is super powerful, but the range is limited, and this is not the kind of gun you want to take as an overall weapon. That you know, I, I cannot say I cannot say that enough because I just don't see it in the uh, uh, public matches. I really don't see many people using it. Um, like, you know, the only times you really, really see it used, it's in some Platinum Solos here and there. And yes, the gun is super powerful. It, it is very powerful. But it doesn't, uh, how can I say it? it? You know, due to its range and due to the fact that this kind of game, you have bigger maps and everything. And depending on the character you put it, this is not, oh, uh, you know, oh, put the rigor on this character and everything works out. No, not at all. You, If you look at an entire Platinum Solo and you judge it because of the rigor, then you absolutely do not understand soloing. You really don't understand gameplay. You really don't. You really don't get it because you really have to understand that the gun is not gonna make the game 100%. You have to have some kind of understanding of the mechanics. You have to understand your enemy. You have to do quite a few things. And if you're standing there with a Rieger, number one, it it does 
stop your character, slow it down a little bit. Um, so when you're shooting the Rieger, it's kind of like when you're shooting the Flame of the Vorcha. Your character stops for a moment, and it's kind of like really slow. You can't run away. So you have to use... The, so there are certain disadvantages to using this weapon, and thus the reason why I never... I rarely ever see it. Rarely ever I see this gun being used in a public match. The only time I ever see this gun ever really being used, if the people actually know the map, and if it's going to be like a glacier or a very tight map, and even then, it is very rarely used. I'll be mean, from my experience, from what I've seen in public matches, from what I've seen. So, having said that, let me talk about the the, the qualities and the differences between uh, PC gaming and console gaming. Okay, both are great. The, 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 there are no differences when it comes to uh, the enemy health and shields and you know the game mechanics. It's all the same. Um, the only difference is, is that the frame rate. Okay, there are certain weapons that are dependent on frame rate. So let me let me break that down for you guys who are on Xbox and on PS3. The frame rate uh, cap is 30, 30 frames per second. Okay, so that's where we're playing. That's what I'm playing at. That's what uh, you know. PS3 is playing at now. For PC players, um, a lot of PC players, depending on their computer, their their capability, they're mostly playing at 30 FPS as well. Sometimes a little higher. But anything higher than 30 FPS makes your weapon stronger. Okay. So, but but let me let me also say a few other things. It also sends more information to the enemies faster, so the enemies can actually find you a little quicker. But then your weapon, like for example the Rieger, is actually uh, uh, does a lot more damage uh, than it normally would at a 30 frames per second. Okay, so let's say if you're playing at 60 FPS or especially 120 FPS, um, if you're playing at a higher frame rate per second, forget it. The Rieger will destroy uh, 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 an Atlas, for example. So uh, if you see other gameplay and you're like, man, how come Invader? How come you have to use three clips to take down an Atlas or four clips to take? That doesn't make any sense. I've seen other videos where the guy's taking down an entire Atlas in one clip. Well. What you will notice is that, that that mostly when you see somebody taking down an atlas in one clip, it's always PC ga uh, PC gameplay, and that is totally fine. Um, console gameplay, since it's capped at 30 FPS, we will not be able, you will never be able to take down an atlas in one clip. You should normally at least minimum two clips to three. In this gameplay, you will notice it takes me at least three clips to take down a, a platinum atlas. So that is the difference. Is when the PC gaming, you you see a PC game, you'll see that uh, sometimes the, uh, the frame rate per second will be a, a little higher, might be a 60. So what will happen is a gun like the Rieger, it is frame rate dependent. So the higher the frame rate, the more damage it's going to do. It's going to be a little bit more damaging. So the, I just want to break that down. I just let you guys know it's it's not a cheat or anything. It just um, the the frame rate differences do make a difference in the game. It it actually makes the gun a little bit more godlike, uh, especially a gun like the Rieger, where you put incendiary rounds four, you put you know shotgun rail amp three, and, and you know and, and it's forget it. The gun becomes a beast, and you can really destroy and wreck. You know like being able to one clip an atlas. It, it's a big difference. It's really, really powerful. Uh, unfortunately, I can't show you guys that here. Um, the other thing is that in some of the gameplay in the past, you will notice playing against the Geth was much different than, than my gameplay. Uh, the reason is because the bombers were not introduced back in the day. So, just so you guys can understand, the Geth now are very different. The bombers were not introduced at the time, and at the time, the the Geth, the, the Geth primes they're their combat drones were simply, um, how can I say it, uh, they were simply kind of, uh, it's not right to say meat shields because the primes are not meat, but they, they, they were mostly kind of like shields for the prime so that, you know, for you to get to the prime you have to shoot the combat drone. So the combat drone was changed. Now the combat drone has stunning capability. It's not just the combat drone that has a stunning capability, but now also the rocket troopers, even their rockets, they won't necessarily stun the crow guard 100%, but they, they'll kind of stun them just lightly. The other thing is that the bombers will stun the crap out of the crow guard. So in the past, if you look at some of the Krogan Vanguard Platinum Solos, uh, versus the Geth, it's like amazing. You you would be able to go through Platinum easily, fly around, charge your you know you're using your Rieger, destroying everything. Very easy mode. Um, 
I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying it's easy, but just easier um, in the sense that, you know, it was it was different. And you, you could still get wrecked, obviously. The Pyros would still destroy you. The Pyros were still strong. But these new additions to the Geth make versing the Geth really tough. So the Crow Guard versus the Geth and people saying that it's easy mode, it's it's not anymore. It's not the same. Uh, you have to play a little different. As a matter of fact, I was going to play these first two waves. Um, versus uh, the Geth very differently. I was going to charge into the two primes so you guys can see exactly what happens. If you charge into the front of two primes or three and think that you can take them on like in the past, let me tell you something. You have you have a big surprise coming to you. The primes will slap the crap out of you. All of their turrets will shoot at you. The, 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 <laughs> the little bombers are stunning you so you can't even shoot. By the time you try to biotic charge again, you're dead on the ground and you will keep on dying. So, right now, fighting the Geth with a Crow Guard is a very different experience. It is extremely doable, of course, and it is actually uh, an easier experience. Not easy, but it's an easier experience than using another character. But it is not easy mode anymore. It's, uh, you, you know, you're not allowed to say it's easy mode. It's just, it's just not. Uh, so, you will notice here that I'm, I'm, I'm not charging to double primes what I'm mostly doing is I'm trying to separate the primes and I can take on one at a time you can actually take one prime at a time you shoot your Rieger at its head get the headshot you know burn them down and biotic charge and, and you know rinse and repeat over and over so you can take down one prime head on uh, two primes not not doable it's just they'll destroy you the other one is constantly doing a melee and if the bombers are around they're stunning you the bombers stun him see this guy before in the past he was just he was untouchable. You know, you, you could not touch this guy. He was just so awesome. I mean, he's still awesome, but he, you could just not, you couldn't stun him. And then when they made the updates to to the Geth, then all of a sudden, hell, guess what? Now the Krogan Baragar gets stunned. All of a sudden, now he can get stunned. So the bombers destroy this guy. Sometimes, especially when you're trying to biotic charge a bomber, if you don't have your crosshair like right on the center of the bomber, there are times that you're tapping the, the, the charge button, it's just not going. So the bombers are really tough uh, in the sense of, you know, once in a while you can actually, uh, your charge gets messed up. So you have to really put your crosshair right there in the center of the bomber to be able to get your charge uh, going. Let's see, it's the only time I ever have issues charging, uh, using the biotic charges. When it comes to bombers, I have to make sure my crosshair is right on them. Uh, the the other thing is that uh, w when it, when it comes to the the Geth, there the faction changed a little bit in the sense that you know like wave two Geth now it's, it's three primes. Um, so I would say the hardest you know the hardest waves are really the first and second, um, and also the, uh, the they're short waves which is a good thing. But wave two is three primes. You get three primes at once, which is absolutely insane. And they don't. They don't spawn together. It's always two primes on one side of the map and then one prime on the other side with a whole bunch of pyros. The other thing is that uh, that's wave one and two, right? And then wave nine is, I would say, the next most difficult wave because you get double, you know, double primes, banshees, phantoms, and uh, a whole bunch of uh, little mooks, you know, that try to really hurt you and destroy you. So, that's the other thing. So, we, uh, the, the way uh, the Geth work on Platinum now is quite, quite different. Uh, and and uh, I don't know if you noticed that there. I was trying to was trying to shit in an atlas there. But, <laughs> anyway, you'll notice uh, it takes me more than one clip to, to, to destroy an atlas. Way more than one clip. Uh, I, I can't do it. I'm capped at 30 FPS. Uh, makes a huge difference in the gameplay. Um, I could probably, you know, and, and, and it makes a huge difference in the sense of time. Like, if I could one clip an Atlas or one clip of a few other enemies, I would probably be able to go run through this faster. So it makes it a little tougher. If I were to do a speed run with the Crow Guard, let's say, uh, uh, you know, me and a versus a, maybe a PC player, my time would be different. But the great thing is that, you know, we all respect each other, right? We all uh, know. Uh, what's great about the PC gaming and uh, what's great about console gaming as well. So there are benefits to both. So that's the great thing about it as well. We we understand the differences. So for those of you guys who don't understand and may see another gameplay video, those are the differences. This is this is why you may see on PC some of uh, you know that uh, a weapon like the Rieger do a lot more damage than let's say if you're on the Xbox or PS3. Uh, it's the frame rate. Uh, it's the, the frame rate differences, and it's not a cheat. It's just simple you know frame rates. A uh, frame rate situation. 
and it um, it, it does give a certain advantage, but at the same time, it's nothing that you know, it, it's nothing to mock at. It's just something to understand. Um, so when you guys see something like, for example, one of XCal's videos, uh, please don't ever look at that as a cheat. Uh, XCal is an amazing player, and you know when you look at some of the great, uh, great gameplay he's had in the past, I think it's absolutely amazing. And it's and again, it's a, a PC game. So those are the differences. It's uh, it's just a frame rate situation. Now when it comes to um, there's another thing I want to talk about when it comes to this the the, the crow guard. Um, when it comes to this build, uh, I've been asked to kind of talk about, you know, kind of look, to set up a crow guard build because I, again, like I said in the beginning, I, I've stood away from, I, I stood away from using this character because he was made very famous by uh, other gamers, and he was constantly being used by other gamers, and um, there was a lot of gameplay out on him, so I kind of, you know, I decided to do platinum solos and uh, platinum gameplay and gold gameplay on other characters that are not current, you know. Uh, we're not being used all the time. We're, we're not being showcased. For example, some of the first Platinum Solos, I was using characters that were very flimsy, very weak. Even, for example, the Human Adept. Uh, you know, I was the first person on YouTube uh, to have a Human Adept Platinum Solo out there. And, you know, I was still the first person on YouTube for a very long time to recently somebody finally did another one. Um, and it was just about a month ago uh, or about two weeks ago. And I did mines uh, last year. So, you know, and at that time, I wanted to make sure I had, you know, characters like that, um, that most people would not think, oh, wow, man, this character is so flimsy or whatever. I would not think that this character could do, you know, could handle Platinum by itself. So those were the challenges. But this character is, <laughs> this is amazing. Well, first of all, before, before we get into the build, you know, it's a Krogan. I mean, come on. You gotta love Krogans. Even if you're not doing melee with him, they say the most funniest thing, th things. They're awesome. They're big. They're, you know, they're these, like, big burly uh, frogs to me. That's, that's pretty much what they look like. So, but you guys have been asking me for this build. Um, I know that there are tons of videos out there for the crow guard and you know there are builds out there this is of a tank this is a tank build okay and this build is is uh, I can't say guaranteed because there are no guarantees in life but I'll give you a warranty that <laughs> this is a tank build and you'll be you'll pretty much be able to stay alive I'm I, I mean unless you get insta killed you should be okay uh, uh, and it happens. You, you'll notice in this gameplay that you will get, you can die. I was actually going for 10 wave survive in this game, but on the end of wave eight, I, you know, again, this this character gets stunned. I was actually fighting two uh, pyros, and a rocket trooper shot at me at the same time that the two pyros started flaming me, like burning me. And the pyros flame are just devastating to barriers they just devastate this guy's barriers i could not get my charge on in time and i died and i was so upset i was so upset because i was like man i could have gotten 10 wave survive with this guy and I, I it just it was messed up there and wave nine i died again i ended up i think uh dying only two times uh, because again if you play this character well you can actually you know do well with him and i'll talk a little bit about the strategy and tactics of what you can do while playing the crow guard since you, you can't play the crow guard like in the past um you can still play him very aggressively but at the same time i'll give you a few little tactics and, and tips and tricks and um, if you say you want to do a platinum solo make it a little easier for yourself have a character like this that you know he has regeneration capabilities for his barriers through biotic charge and at the same time that that you know he has damage reduction and all these things let's talk about a biotic charge biotic charge i always like to go rank four radius to be able to hit multiple enemies like that if there are two phantoms together or two whatever anything clustered up i'll be able to stagger both and it affects both the other thing is uh, on rank 5 I go for weapon synergy not melee synergy because I rarely have a melee with this guy I'm usually using just a rigor. Um so weapon synergy what it lo what happens is every time you buy a charge first like for for 5 seconds afterwards you get a weapon damage bonus of 25%. So you're actually doing more weapon damage after you buy out a charge which is a really good power rag to use. So in this situation I'm using the almighty rigor and I want to make sure that I get even more weapon damage uh, through through doing this. So on rank six, what I'm going for is not bonus power because I'm not gonna be 
I'm not going to be using any other power. I'm not going to be detonating my barriers at all. So, in rank 6, I go for barrier. Increase barriers by an additional 50% after successful biotic charge. That means that my barriers are restored 100%. The force is 1,237, as you guys know before, to stagger a phantom, you need at least a 1,000 N force. And the damage is 825, so you actually do some damage with your biotic charge this way. And that's the way I go. I, I don't put any carnage on this build. Uh, there are other builds for this guy that you can put carnage on that are a lot of fun. Uh, I may do a video on that, uh, kind of like a, a crow guard, you know, carnage build. This is not that build, but you know it's good to it's good for you guys to know that it is out there. For barriers, what barriers do? Okay, barrier uh, barrier on a crow uh, on a crow guard do the do, they do two things. First of all, um, they give you damage reduction and they protect you and all that. But they, they it's also an offensive power. Um, if you use it, I don't recommend it on, um, on platinum to use it offensively, but on gold, silver, and bronze, you can use it offensively. Now, for platinum, like what, I, what I'm doing here, I never detonate it. I never take it off. The moment I turn it on, that's it. It's on. I don't do anything with it because I'm using it for damage reduction. So, check this out. What I do is on rank 4, instead of blast effect, because again, I'm not using this offensively, I'm using it defensively, I go for barrier strength damage taken by 5%. Rank 5, I go for shield recharge because I want to make sure that my shields are constantly recharging, that I'm a tank, that I'm just, you know, forget it. Rank 6, barrier strength. Again, increased damage protection by 10%. Specked out this way, you have a damage reduction bonus of 40%. Now, let me be very clear. To get the full 40% damage reduction, you have to be in cover. Okay, and, and and I will maybe do a quick uh, new video guide about that, so, so you guys can understand what damage reduction is. But still, the higher the damage reduction, the great. So when a Banshee Warpole hits me, it's not gonna hit me with the full 100% damage that it normally does. The damage damage is reduced, and I can take more. Now, this is the defensive capability. If you do. If you do want to use barrier as an offensive power, you can you still get damage reduction bonus. But by using barrier as an offensive power, again I don't recommend it on platinum, but if you use it offensively, you're constantly spamming it. And by using barrier spam, what it does, it, it, it becomes like a like a nova. Kinda of like the way the human vanguard does its nova and and it has a blast radius of effect. All the enemies around you get pushed back and stunned. And now the lighter enemies, the unshielded enemies, can actually, depending on the way you set it up, can actually uh, float in, into the air. They actually float into the air. So you have like husk around you, and you pop the barrier, the husk will fly off into the air. So you'll be, you heard it, and it'll fly off. So if you're at the edge, and I used to do this when I was in silver, I used to love doing this. So I would be at, I would get a, a whole spawn, I would charge in, and there was a whole spawn of enemies, like uh, marauders or whatever, and then I would hit barrier, and I'll barrier spam, and the barrier will push the enemies over the edge of the map, and the entire spawn would die, because they would be thrown over the map, so they'll all start floating over the map, it was freaking amazing, it was awesome, it was very awesome, so that's one way to use barrier offensively, and you can use it kind of like a nova, where you can just detonate the barrier constantly and it's so fast you recharge it so fast that you can do this over and over and over really quickly um, again I don't recommend it for platinum but I do recommend it uh, if you want to just have a different kind of gameplay you want to do something different with the crow guard um, and use barrier spam then you can do barrier spam Krogan Battle Master, what I'm doing here, guys, it rank four, it's up to you. I'm going for damaging capacity only because I wanted the uh, the weight capacity bonus because uh, I am using a very heavy weapon. The Rieger is very heavy. So due to the fact that it's heavy and at the same time I'm using the heavy barrel, I wanted to make sure his, his, his biotic charge didn't take too long to come back. So normally I recommend weapon damage in rank 4, but in this situation since I'm using the Rieger, it's heavy, I'm using the heavy barrel, I'm going for damage and capacity. And on rank 5, I definitely recommend headshots. I only went here for power damage, just to increase the damage, uh, make sure that this biotic charge was good, but I, it was fine regardless. I would definitely recommend headshots, because here, you, you know, if you do the focus on a lot of headshots, which I do a lot here for the primes and, and boss enemies, um, I would have had a little bit more of a headshot bonus. 
and rank 6 I always go for weapon damage guys so here you get a, a, we a weight capacity bonus of 30 power damage bonus of 35 weapon damage of 20% so it's pretty decent and rage guys for the tank build it's all the ones in the bottoms of health and fitness which gives them 1850 health in 1850 barrier so that's that's the tank build with this guy and for the Rieger let's say you want to do the Krogar Rieger situation here well the Rieger I'm going for the weapon mods the shotgun high velocity barrel increased damage by 25% and allows you to pierce heavily and also the spare thermal clip to give you um, you know you need more ammo on this gun because you're, you're gonna have to constantly go back and forth when it comes to uh, uh, getting ammo so Okay, so now on to the gameplay and a little bit of the tactics and what you can do with this guy because again This is it's just different now mind you. I am on ghost hazard. So yeah, I do have uh, a hazard here I do have the acid rain which is constantly on top of me and that's that's a little tough because you see that it, it is burning through his barrier So I wanted to make sure if I did a, a Krogar platinum solo to you know make it a little challenging do something pretty cool um, Because he is a tank and he's very very powerful and I like him a lot He's a lot of fun, but I wanted to make sure when once I do uh, my Platinum Solo with him, at least to give him some kind of challenge. So, this new Hazard map is pretty cool. And as of, as of this moment, guys, for those of you who do not know, the Platinum Solo Hall of Fame and Archive that um, that the community has done, that that, we, that, that, I, that I work with, on, with the community on, and, and uh, I keep the records as well. Um, as of this moment, with this solo, I have now soloed all of the Hazard maps on, on Platinum. So that's great. I've been able to solo Hazard Glacier quite a few times. I've uh, been able to solo uh, Dagger Hazard. That was with the Juggernaut, which was actually a lot of fun. A uh, character that I don't really use much. But I know that you guys were asking for it, and I thought it would be really cool to use them on a, and also give him a challenge, like I said before, and uh, use them on Dagger Hazard. And at the same time, did Firebase White Hazard, uh, did a Platinum Solo versus the Geth as well. And if you guys noticed, I'm soloing the Geth here a few times, um, whenever I can. Uh, they're definitely the toughest faction. From from fighting all the factions put together, I will say now, at this moment, I had a, a different perspective before. I used to think it was the Collectors, but after playing the Collectors quite a bit and, and playing all the other factions quite a bit, it's very obvious that the Geth are the toughest. Um, the Geth faction itself... Um, uh, I, I would say because of wave one and two and wave nine, um, they're they're quite difficult, and it all depends on the character you're using, of course, because if you have somebody like the Crow Guard, he can still manage. Um, even then, you can't buy a charge into multiple enemies. Like you see what I'm doing here, I'm playing a certain way, and I'm I'm going to talk about that in a moment. Um, but you know this this. Uh, you still have to play with uh, using your tactics. You still have to use right hand advantage. You still have to know when to charge. You, you still have to know when to take on an enemy or two at a time. And that, that's what's happening here with this character. You, you, can't, you can't just buy out a charge into an entire spawn and expect for everything to go well. You have to still, still take your time. If you notice, I'm going around picking my targets. I presently have banshees, so I'm you know I'm very careful of that. So, in waves that you have banshees, you have to be you have to make sure that you're taking them one at a time, and uh, doing what you can to not let them corner you, and 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 even fight them on a ledge if you can, or or in an incline, so that you're not having as much of an issue with them. And if you notice here, this is I, I don't know if this is the situation where where it happened, but no. But anyway, uh, yeah, I, I, I pretty much went through this entire gameplay without dying until the end of Wave 8, and that, that just really bothered me. But let's talk about the tactics a little bit. When you're using this character, and you want to play Platinum, you want to do your Platinum Solo, or even Gold, guys. This is definitely, in Gold, this would be very easy if you just pick the Geth. The Geth do not have any insta-kill units, so you can pretty much... You can go fight the Geth with the Crow Guard and not have to worry. And you'll be you'll totally be fine. You can just destroy with the same build, Geth, uh, Geth, <coughs> Geth Gold with the Crow Guard is is um, it's another kind of like uh, you know solo easy mode for Gold. So that, that that'll definitely be a way to go for sure. Now. For uh, let me go back to what I'm saying here. Now, for the tactics for this, you still have to make sure that you are paying attention to your cover, paying attention to your barriers. Now, since the Rieger is a little heavy with this character, what you want to do is when after you biotic charge, 
you're going to want to shoot. Obviously, it's going to take a little long for your barriers to come up. But the moment, the moment you're ready for your biotic charge, make sure you do it. Now, sometimes you'll think, oh, well, I have a lot of um, health and, and shields. But the problem is when you're fighting enemies like the pyros, they will burn right through your barriers. It's just... It's just absolutely ridiculously like how OP they are with burning through barriers. So when it comes to the pyros, you want to make sure that your, your your barriers are not more than halfway down. You need to to at least shoot, shoot, and then just get back to charging. With the pyros, do not you know you you, you can. You can take it easy or be a little lax with other enemies, but when it comes to you, if you notice, look how look how fast the pyros are burning me. I literally I have to leave to, to stay alive. I have to leave and make sure that you know I play smart and intelligently, and not just think that oh the crow guard is so you know so tanky he can handle it. No, if your barriers are halfway already dead, you have to make sure you either biotic charging to get your barriers back up, or you got to get the heck out of there. <coughs> Excuse me. You have to get out of there. If not, you're going to get destroyed. So, that is just the point when, when it comes to the Crow Guard. Because, I don't know, I think uh, Bioware at times, um, they, you know, they see some of the videos. And they see things that the community does. And then, they're like, oh no, this is so OP. We're going to have to do some changes. So, after they, they made some changes to the Geth. And they made some changes to the, the Crow Guard's capabilities. Uh, meaning, that he can get staggered and stuff. Because before he was... I mean, he just could not get staggered. He was impossible to stagger this guy it was i mean you it could have been done I mean, if a whole bunch of enemies were shooting at him at the same time maybe but in reality in the past he was he could not get staggered but now the combat drone staggers him stuns him really um the the, the all the drones all the combat uh, i'm sorry all the bombers all, all the bombers st stun him so it'll stop you if you notice a, a a bomber when they stun you you try to shoot your Rieger or reload it, it's it's you can't because it, it kind of stops you from doing it because of that stun. So that is extremely detrimental when playing against the Gath because if you're fighting bombers, you gotta be cognizant of that. If not, you can get destroyed. So those are the differences, guys. You know, this the Crow Guard is still powerful. He's still amazing. He's still a tank. He can still do great things. As you know, as you can see here, I'm going through this map. I'm going through this Platinum Soul. I'm not having much difficulty. Um, it, I still have to constantly pay attention, though, because again, like I said before, the Rieger is a short-range weapon, so I have to get up close and personal. But I still have to do it in such a way that I am paying attention to my barriers. I'm paying attention to which enemies I should be able to charge. And I have to know, okay, how many pyros are there in the mix? Uh, can I take on two? Can I do this? Can I do that? So it's not just, you know, going blindly into the fray. You still have to play intelligently and make sure that you're covering yourself with your biotic charge and making sure that you understand um, each enemy, um, each enemy that you're, you know, trying to fight against and, and, and uh, do anything against. Now, it's funny, I'm fighting a Ravager right now, and I had a situation in a previous attempt where. A Ravager, you know, if you go next to it, they will explode their sack, and, you know, it's very powerful, that damage. I had a situation where uh, the damage was so much that I actually, it, it took down my barriers, and I was, I was pretty much down to, to, like, one or two bars of health. It was just crazy. I almost died. So, I, I, here's, here it goes to death. This was it. Ah, this was it, guys. Oh, yeah, sorry, I had to stop a moment because that 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 ended my uh, my staying alive streak. <laughs> I was so upset, um, but anyway, anyway, it is what it is. So yeah, you you have situations that you got to be careful, especially for enemies like the Ravagers, for they will they will destroy you. So yeah, guys, you know the the Krogan Vanguard is absolutely amazing. He can handle platinum. He can do quite well. And if you don't, you're uh, you have situations where you want to do like a, a gold solo. You can do, you know, use this guy versus the Geth. And since it's only the Geth, no other factions, you'll be able to manage it quite well. You just be careful the bombers and the things that I did explain here before. Now, you guys notice here, look at this situation. I want to give you guys a little tip. If you guys see the Banshee up there, she got, kind of goes into that corner. You see, go where I am at right now. What I do is I, I get in her line of sight. I make sure that I still dodge her warp ball. But I get in her line of sight because what will happen is if, if you don't, then she'll be stuck up there. And the Rieger, just, just the range was not that great. But if you get really close, you can. 
But let's say, um, let's say you had a, let's say you wanted to make bring her down. If you stay here, she'll actually walk off that ledge. So this is what you want to do. You want to be right here so that she'll walk down. And then once she walks down, then you can actually, uh, you can actually fight her, and she won't get stuck up there. But from here, from this distance, if you have something like armor piercing, then you could actually hurt her, and that's what I did in this situation. See, she's a little cheap. She's a little cheater. She can snipe up there, and I can't. But if you, you know, you're right here in this situation where I'm at, you know, then you can just actually wait her out. She'll drop down, and you can just kill her. But I was able to just kill her straight away. So, a wave nine. I was trying to finally see out. Oh, well, let me use a missile because this is one of the toughest waves, and I had a nothing, a nasty missile fail. Look at this. I don't know what the heck I did here. This is so fortunate. I shot a missile, expected to get radius, and I just killed one Geth Prime. The other Prime was just standing there looking at me all funny. And then the Banshee, I didn't realize the Banshee had one bar left. I, I She catches up with me later, and I, maybe, I was able to kill her. I realized she only had one bar. So it did damage her, but it just didn't destroy them. It was just it was a failure on my part. Probably should have aimed at the Prime better, and uh, so that the Prime would have taken the shot and the radius would have destroyed them. But, you know, after that, I set off again, and I'm just going to fight the enemies head on and forget the nukes. Because, you know, Wave 9 is tough. Wave 9 is, a, is, is really the toughest wave for, uh, well, uh, besides Wave 10, obviously. Wave 10 is always the toughest for any faction, but that's, I think that's obvious to everybody. That's why when I say the toughest, I always talk about the waves in between. I'm not talking about like, Wave 10. Wave 10 is always going to be the hardest wave on Platinum for every faction. I mean, Wave 10 is going to bring everybody. Uh, it's going to bring all the boss enemies. It's going to bring double everything. So, Wave 9, uh, Wave 9 Geth is really tough. Uh, you get Phantoms, you get Banshees, and you also get Primes. So, you have, a, you know, two of the most toughest insta-kill units in the game, which are the Banshees and the Phantoms. And you have the stunning, you know, the, the, the stunning bastard of a Prime uh, enemy, which is, you know, the Geth Prime. So, and here goes the Banshee with the one bar. <laughs> she caught up with me. I, really, uh, that was a good one, though. But still, you know, this is a tough wave. So if you are doing this kind of like, let's say, in a smaller map, like Glacier or whatever, it will be a little tougher. It will definitely be a little tougher. And I may, I don't know, I, I may do, I may try to do the uh, the Geth Thunderdome challenge with this character again and see if I can do it. Um, it would definitely be a challenge to do this on Glacier Hazard versus the Geth. Uh, but let's see. I don't know. I think it's possible. Anything's possible. Um, but that's that's usually what happens on this wave. So I didn't really uh, need to nuke much. Uh, I think I used maybe one other missile. Maybe. I, I really don't remember. But you can actually just, as you see it uh, as I'm doing, I'm not by like charging crazily into the fray because the Banshees put together with everything else and Phantoms and whatever will actually destroy you. And in a situation like Wave 9, what I'm doing, I'm actually looking out for the Phantoms because the Phantoms are uh, pretty decent to destroy. The Biotic Charge st staggers them and then with the power of the Rieger, you could actually take them out and just destroy them. So I'm actually looking for Phantoms because they are worth a lot more then uh, they're worth a lot more than than a lot of the other enemies so every time I kill a phantom the wave budget goes down dramatically and that is good for those of you guys that know wave budget each wave has a budget meaning that if you kill a certain amount of enemies they're worth a certain points a certain amount of points and once those points are reached then that's it that's the end of the wave and then the enemies won't keep on respawning so when I say wave budget, that means that I've, you know, I, I've killed enough enemies to ma make sure that the wave budget is at zero, and then that's the end of the wave, and then we have the next wave. So that's that, guys. So yeah, this is, that's you know, dealing with the Geth on Platinum, and that's just a really, really, really tough situation. So talking about other things, um, I am working. I am going to continue providing Mass Effect 3 content, guys, and I do have um, more Petro Whoop Ass content because I've been really, I really, really wanted to finish that up. So that's a little update, and I've talked about it before as well. But you know, it definitely takes time for me to do these things. But oh, that was the second death. But. Uh, I do do want to say that I, I am playing other games as well. Like for example, Splinter Cell. You guys are seeing um, you know game gameplays on it, and uh, Shadrach and I are trying to do. Uh, I am Shadrach and I are trying to do um, a few co-op missions together. And I've really gotten into Diablo 3. I you know Diablo is not really my kind of game, but this latest version of it is actually really 
really interesting and really a lot of fun. And also been playing Dishonored, as I said, said before. I don't know if you guys are interested in Dishonored, but I've been thinking of doing a gameplay, uh, gameplay walkthrough of it just for fun. And I'm going to kind of test it out and put and put some gameplay out there for Dishonor and see what you guys think. But I also want to see if I could um, kind of do so, some tips and tricks and, and see if uh, you guys really enjoy it. Either way, I'm going to continue playing it. I'm going to do my gameplay of Dishonor as well. And I'm going to have a lot of fun with it because I think I can get it done and get a good, good, you know, good amount of videos for you guys and have some really fun entertainment with Dishonored as well and uh, and a few of the games that I, I just recently purchased um, in the meantime till Bungie's Destiny comes out so with Destiny uh, Destiny is a 10 year game and for those of you guys who don't know those of you guys who not been following along when it comes to that um, I plan to with, uh, with with also my friend I am Shadrach uh, we're definitely planning to go the long haul when it comes to Destiny. Destiny is one of those games that has a 10-year plan. It's it's um, it's it's a game that really reminds me. It's it, I don't know. I guess it's, it it kind of feels like a mix of um, it, it feels like a mix of Halo, Call of Duty, and Mass Effect all in one game. So that's why I really really looking forward to seeing what Destiny has to offer. And from what I've seen so far, it looks really really exciting. Plus, it's from a company that I enjoy. Like, for example, we all love Bioware because of Mass Effect and Dragon Age and, and all these other game, great games that Bioware has brought us. I mean, in the past, I used to play games like, for example, Star Wars, Knights of the Old Republic. Oh, my goodness. Freaking love those games. Star Wars, Knights of the Old Republic. Holy crap. I, I replayed those games so many times, part one and two. I mean, it was just, I loved them. I really enjoyed it. I really, you know, I really enjoyed building up the characters. And matter of fact, I really wish... I had a current version of those, and I, I would even do a gameplay playthrough of those just for fun because they were just fun. And if you never played them, hey, why not, right? Put them on the channel or something. But I just, I just don't have them. Um, <clears throat> I really don't. Uh, but we love Bioware for games like that, and uh, we love Bungie for other kinds of games, like for example, Halo. Two different companies, two different kinds of gameplay, but at the same time. You know, this new Bungie's Destiny, what I'm enjoying about it, even though it is a first-person shooter, so a lot of you guys who really enjoy the third-person genre better um, may not fully enjoy that aspect of it. And there are some people who actually have issues playing uh, first-person, uh, you know, just just pretty much health issues. It's hard to play games that are first-person. They get... Uh, uh, nauseous or dizzy, you know, stuff like that. And that happens. That's unfortunate. It's just you can't help it. Uh, sometimes video games cause uh, certain health issues like that. So some people won't be able to play it because of that. But you know, it's still the game has a mix. It seems like a mix to me when I'm looking at it of Mass Effect slash Halo slash Call of Duty, like all these great games put together. And I'm really looking forward to it because it seems like the uh, the, the first of all the storyline and the story behind it seems really really great. The other thing is that the gameplay and what's happening with the characters seems like it's, uh, it's very varied. Um, there are a lot of vi varieties to it. I enjoy the fact that it's it's humanity. You know, um, yeah. Yes, we we enjoy Mass Effect because we can play aliens as well, and we have a really you know rich alien uh, community. But I enjoy that this is a whole situation where it's humanity trying to defend itself and and survive, and humanity has had something happen to it that. Um, they kind of have a savior at the same time and that's that's what that is about that's a big big part of destiny so i'm looking forward to seeing what it's going to be about and we're going to be spending a lot of time down to you know camping out you know the first night to get the video game to posting up uh, doing our best to be the first to post up gameplay and that kind of situation and enjoy and really get through it the same way we have kind of focused on mass effect 3 and uh focus on the mass effect videos and you know and that's that's the great thing about this see we we have enjoyed mass effect so much and mass effect has been such an amazing game and don't get me wrong i will continue doing mass effect 3 multiplayer gameplay i, I have a goal to solo a lot of these characters I have a goal to do more team games it's gonna take me quite a bit but at the same time um, this game has been actually awesome the community is still strong there's still a lot of people playing this game and so uh, for the people who think that the game has died or whatever it really hasn't they're just uh, they're people playing other games but they still play this game in between so um, every time I create a, a lobby or a random lobby the game the lobbies always get filled up so 
you know, it's great to know that this game is still alive and kicking. There's still a lot of people playing. I mean, lots of people playing. Thousands. So, that's uh, that's great to know, actually, and that this, this gaming community is still active, is still up there, is still going. And uh, the other great thing is that, well, I'll be able to do this while I'm doing other gameplays as well. And once Bungie comes out, then that'll be a great, great focus. And in the meantime, we will be waiting for the next Mass Effect. What's going to happen with the next Mass Effect? guys I do not know all I, I do know one thing though I'm gonna tell you guys this and I left it towards the end of the video um, uh, I, uh, uh, my friend of mine and I we we're thinking about uh, talking to Bioware all right talking to Bioware to do uh, to see if we could visit Bioware itself and take a tour of the uh, take a tour of Bioware if if they allow us to you know to film the tour and actually, you guys will see me live, you know, just me, not not, not gameplay, but you actually just see me live. And, and just, you know, walking around Bioware, talking to some of the developers and whatever. So, we're working on that, and I, I hope that within a year from now that we'll be able to do that. And maybe, maybe if, if they give us something, maybe some kind of access, or hopefully... Um, hopefully get us in some kind of beta for the next Mass Effect. Um, you know, I'm being very very keen on this I, I tell you I'm, i am communicating as much as i can with the bioware community um i am reaching out to a few of the bioware developers hopefully you know just reminding them letting them know hey i'm still here i'm alive if you guys ever have a beta or ever have anything coming out for the new mass effect listen just letting you know i mean i'm a part of the community I yeah would love to be a part of it and you know let me know what the what the rules are if there any you know anything legal if I could actually if I could actually record anything then I really want to be uh, like the first person to show any gameplay for the next Mass Effect so I am hustling guys for that so for these of you guys who do not know I am hustling big time uh, so my goal is that. I hope that I, I am able to, uh, with a friend of mine and a few other people, uh, to be the first to actually show, you know, the next Mass Effect, uh, whether it be beta access or whatever, to show you guys what the next Mass Effect is going to look like. Play the multiplayer, single player, everything, all of the above. I mean, we're gonna. Uh, let, let me tell you something. I'm gonna. Uh, I'm gonna pretty much no life the next Mass Effect because I I just want to make sure that I. I want to be one of the first. So uh, I hope that you guys have really, truly enjoyed this gameplay. This has been the Krogan Vanguard, and I really like them a lot, as you guys can tell. Don't use them often at all. I, I really don't. I don't use them often. I like faster characters, meaning in the sense of like, like they're lighter characters that have dodges and stuff like that. But I do like this guy a lot. I used to use him a lot when he first came out. And he's great. He's great. You got to be careful with stuff like Banshees and Phantoms. But um, he, the, great, the great advantage that this guy has uh, over the other Krogans um, is his Biotic Charge. Because his Biotic Charge staggers uh, enemies like Phantoms. Uh, don't become too much of a problem for him unless he gets cornered in such a way that he can't use his biotic charge. But his biotic charge really helps him get out of problems. <laughs> so that is a great thing about the Krogan Vanguard. And and who does not love the Krogan? So this is my Krogan Vanguard Platinum Solo, guys. And as of this moment, I've soloed every Hazard Platinum map. I am working on the other Platinum maps. And I'm also working on completing all the Vanguards. Yes, that includes the Volus. Guys, I've been working out with the Volus, and I think I got a Volus Vanguard Platinum Solo coming up very, very soon. He's so awesome. He's actually very powerful, too. Very tanky. He can actually survive Platinum quite well. So, I'm working. I'm going to be working on the Volus N7 Slayer, the Asari Vanguard. I'm going to make sure I get them all. So, yeah, guys, this is it. I uh, hope you guys have truly enjoyed it. I enjoy you guys as well. And, um... Please comment, rate, and subscribe. It definitely helps out. And this is Invader 1. I will see you guys in the next video. And once again, Invader 1 out.